So most of the internet still doesn't believe that we landed on the moon in spite of all the evidence. You're always going to say that the flags are waving in the breeze or Hubble should be able to image it even though Hubble's optics can't see something as close as the moon. Anyways, there's plenty of proof out there. And I've got more today on Vintage Space. So this one is actually so super cool, and I learned about this when I met with members of the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter team at the Goddard Space Flight Center last year. So let's go through it. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or LRO, and its companion L-Cross satellites, the Lunar Crater Observation and Sensing Satellites, launched on June 18th of 2009. The initial mission was to map the moon's surface using its suite of seven instruments, and it's been extended a number of times and has continued to return a wealth of information about our moon. Of LRO's seven instruments, there are two that we are really concerned with. The first is LOLA, the laser altimeter, and the second is its cameras. The laser altimeter LOLA is designed to help create a 3D map of the moon using lasers. Basically, a laser is shot from an instrument on board and split into five beams. Those beams hit the moon's surface and then bounce back. Analyzing the time it takes for the beam to hit the instrument again tells the spacecraft and the scientists who analyze the data just how high a specific point on the moon is. So what you get after multiple passes is a pretty good topographical map of heights and altitudes of things on the moon's surface. Not only that, but LOLA can determine the roughness of the surface and determine the slopes all across the moon. And then we have the cameras, two narrow angle cameras and one wide angle camera. The narrow angle cameras together gather high resolution black and white images of the surface, resolving features as small as 3.3 feet or one meter across. The wide angle camera takes images across several color bands. The two narrow angle cameras weren't designed to work together, but they can. They can create stereo images using data taken from multiple consecutive orbits. And they are very good cameras. In low passes, just 15 miles above the moon's surface, they were able to resolve things in striking detail. The narrow angle cameras can capture an image with a pixel scale of 50 centimeters, which is less than 20 inches. This has allowed scientists to resolve the descent stages of the Apollo lunar modules, footpaths from the astronauts, rover tracks, and even ESEP and ALSEPs left on the surface. These detailed stereo images of the moon have been combined with LOLA data. That's the 3D topographical map of the moon's surface. And something really interesting happened when they took this data, combined it, over what is known to be the Apollo 11 landing site. Scientists have previously determined with the most precision possible the exact coordinates of the Apollo 11 landing site and all the other Apollo landing sites. One of the best methods is laser ranging information from retroreflectors left on the surface. So knowing almost exactly the precise longitude and latitude on the moon where Apollo 11 landed, having these detailed stereo images of the site, and also this detailed 3D topographical map, scientists lined them up. And lo and behold, there is a blip in the topography, exactly the height of the Apollo 11 landing stage, exactly where the map says it should be. So proof we landed on the moon, it's actually in the topography map of the moon's surface because it's there, exactly where scientists knew that it would be. And now we have visual and also different kinds of data proof that not only Apollo 11 landed on the moon, but Apollo's 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17 as well. So what do you guys think? What holes are you gonna poke in this very interesting proof of the moon landing? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below and also any other questions, comments, and things you would like to see covered in future episodes. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram for daily-ish, vintage space-ish content. And of course, with new videos going up right here every single week, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode.